Lent is the season of conversion, a time of freedom from slavery of sin. Therefore, let us welcome Lent as the great season in which God reminds us that He is our God who brought us out from the slavery of our sinfulness. A reading is from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on the height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Responsorial Psalm I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will repay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst of Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who, was, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led him up 
a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the clouds came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves questioning what rising from the dead meant. What can blind us or keep us from recognizing God's glory and presence in our lives? Sin and unbelief for sure. Faith enables us to see what is hidden or unseen to the naked eye. Through the eyes of faith, Abraham recognized God and God's call on his life. He saw from afar only what God intended for him, but for his descendants as well. An everlasting covenant of friendship and peace with the living God. Abraham is the father of faith because he puts his hope in the promises of God. Faith makes us taste in advance the light of God's glory when we shall see Him face to face. Are you prepared to see God's glory? God is eager to share His glory with us. We get a glimpse of this when the disciples see Jesus transfigured on the mountain. Jesus' face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. When Moses met with God on Mount Sinai, the skin of his face shone because he has been talking with God. What is the significance of this mysterious appearance? Jesus went to the mountain knowing full well what awaited him in Jerusalem, his betrayal, rejection, and crucifixion. Jesus very likely discussed this moment discuss this momentous decision to go to the cross with Moses and Elijah. God the Father also spoke with Jesus and gave him his approval. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The Father glorified his son because he obeyed. The cloud which overshadowed Jesus and his apostles fulfilled the dream of the Jews that when the Messiah came the cloud of God's presence would fill the temple again. The Lord Jesus not only wants us to see His glory, He wants us to share this glory with us. And Jesus shows us the way to the Father's glory. Follow me, obey my words. Take the path I have chosen for you, and you will receive the glory and blessings of my Father's kingdom. Your names will be written in heaven. How spiritually awake are you to Christ's presence and word of life for you? Peter, James, and John were privileged witnesses to the glory of Christ. We too, as disciples of Christ, are called to be witnesses to his glory. We all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Lord wants to reveal His glory to us, His beloved disciple. Do you seek His presence with expectant faith, reverence, and willing obedience? Let's 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, keep me always alert and awake to you, to your word, your action, and your daily presence in my life. Let me see your glory. Amen.